Good morning, everyone. It's Sunday, November 19th. MBTA General Manager Fielding is our guest this morning. Let's go on the record. It's been quite a ride for the man called in to fix the T, and the price tag for that repair job just hit a sky-high level. Is there light at the end of the tunnel? The GM is here in the chair. Let's go on the record. From WCVB Channel 5, the inside word from Washington to Beacon Hill. Today's newsmakers are going on the record. Welcome to OTR, everyone. I'm Ed Harding, along with News Center Fox political reporter Charmin Sikedi. It's great to have you with us this morning. As you can see, with us is Phil Ng. He was appointed by Governor Maury Healy as the MBTA's general manager in April. He has some 40 years of transportation experience, including top jobs with New York's Metropolitan Transit Authority and the Long Island Railroad. He holds an engineering degree from Cooper Union. It's great to see you always. Thanks for being in the chair this morning. Well, thank you for having me. I Thanks. appreciate it. And timing is perfect. It sure is, because we're going to start with a jaw-dropping number that the T revealed. Uh, you say it's going to take $24.5 billion to fix the entire T system. And that is almost half of the entire state budget, not just for the T, but for everything. So to put that in perspective for people, is, is that amount of funding even possible? How do you get that money? Well, I think it's important to note that that is a snapshot in time of our assets and the condition of our assets, right? And, and that's not looking to say we need $24.5 billion today. It's saying if we were to come in and wanted to replace everything in kind and bring it back to a state of good repair, that's the dollar value. What we really need to do is this is going to help us as a planning tool to be able to set priorities, uh, to be able to talk about bigger picture, longer term needs for the T. Uh, because the idea is to be able to use this now to have those conversations on long-term funding and the ability to prioritize capital needs, state of good repair. Is, if, if the system needs that kind of repair, how can you say it's safe? Because the way the system is set up right now, we are operating in a safe manner. So, for instance, unfortunately, some of the speed restrictions that are, are uh, near and dear to everyone's heart. And the tracks heart, are a big problem right. here, mm -hmm. big part mm -hmm. of this. Yes. In fact, the state of good repair, if you look at that report, shows that the tracks um, significantly in the transit side are not in a state of good repair, which is what people are experiencing. The speed restrictions ensure it's safe. The work that we're planning in 2024 and the end of this year is going to address all of those speed restrictions, as well as tackling state of good repair on top of that. Now, that doesn't get us to the full replacement that right. that number is, right. but it gets us to a point where now we are running uh, more reliable, more frequent service. So, so we're, we're going to, pardon the pun, but we're going to stay on that rail. But you, you were just mentioning slow zones. You, you have a plan to eliminate slow zones on the T subway and trolley service by the end of next year, right? That, absolutely. That's, uh, absolutely. Yes. So it will require significant track closures and diversions to get the job done. Will the pain for gain calculation be clearly visible to riders this time? Yes. Well, what we did um, after my first six months is evaluated how we were tackling these. We were doing work on overnights, uh, which is only a few hours a night. We are doing early access, which adds a few more hours, but it's not as productive as it can be. And then obviously weekend outages. But we also had some diversions, and the recent ones on Ashmont, uh, from JFK, UMass to Ashmont, and the Mattapan branch, both of those demonstrated that we could actually condense more than six months of work and do it in 16 days. And by mm -hmm. giving a dedicated work zone, it's more efficient. You're not losing time for mobilization every night on and off, and you're getting full productivity out of a full shift. So you, you probably talked about, it, that probably leads us into this next point. It, 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 will the process be simultaneous on different branches, or, or is it gonna be one branch at a time, we'll move to the next branch, we'll move to the next branch? We intentionally took a look at how to tackle this in our system. And the intent, if you look at that schedule, uh, was to have them staggered so as not to impact long stretches of corridors, but also to minimize the time that people are on alternative service, of, for instance, bus shuttles. So the intent is not to really have them parallel where, where we're affecting multiple areas. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean as we get into 2024, we find some ways to be more efficient and pull things in sooner. We, you know, we would look to do that. So, at, <clears throat> excuse me. So at the end of next year, this plan moves forward. He's running at normal speeds. That is our plan, yes. I, I asked this very question at the very beginning. Is there light at the end of the tunnel? Is there light at the end of the tunnel? And I, I had said I wouldn't have taken this role if I didn't believe there's light at the end of the tunnel. Um, I am fully uh, confident that we can not only rebuild our workforce, which has been a big um, effort, but we can rebuild our infrastructure. And we can rebuild it um, in meaningful ways. And, and that track acceleration program, 
is a way of doing it uh, with the dollars that we have today. But we're also looking then, obviously, to, to find additional funding because modernization, expansion, uh -huh. all of those things, uh -huh. as well as bringing it back to that state of good repair so it gives us time to deliver those but, larger but projects. Phil, and, and I appreciate the confidence and the belief and the, and the firm commitment, but history suggests that, that, that it can't be done. So how can it be done this time? Well, um, you know, I, don't, I look back on history just to see decisions made. I look back on history to see where we can improve. But what we're really looking at is how do we bring in some best practices that other agencies are using? How do we give our employees proper training? We're looking at redoing our standards. We're looking at making sure they have the right tools, the right equipment. There's things out there that we can actually in enable ourselves to be better at what we do. And then it's also working with the industry to make sure that as we put projects out, on time, on budget is something that's very important to mm -hmm. us. I do want to ask you, because if, if the slow zones, back to those slow zones, if they are removed by the end of next year, I mean, there is going to be a lot of pain in the process. So are you concerned you won't get riders back? I actually, I off? believe this will bring riders back because uh, when we announced early enough for Ashmont Mattapan and we gave people enough information with regards to how to travel during those periods. Yeah. Uh, we saw that it was a very smooth transition. It wasn't where they were surprised. They knew what alternative service we could they have. They had the information. They had the information and we had public meetings. Yeah. We had four public meetings where we went out to explain why we need to do the work, what they can um, expect during that period and what they expect when we're done, plus to get their feedback because that's important to us as we're doing work. We want more feedback mm -hmm. to help make each one of these things better the next time. Yeah. Let's talk about the red line. The red line has some of the most serious systematic problems. Harvard Station, as we've reported this on the news, by the way, has seen quite a few issues. Ceiling panels have fallen down. A utility box came crashing down on the platform, injuring a rider earlier. Not, nothing seriously, but, but injuring. Last week, it was smoke from what is called a propulsion issue. Because I don't know, what is a propulsion issue? On the red line train, it was really a circuit breaker is my understanding. It overheated. Um, that goes to the importance of us replacing our rolling stock, the cars and mm -hmm. trains. Um, we also have, uh, I believe it was this past Monday, um, the 13th, that we had a uh, power feeder mm -hmm. that overheated. Um, that also is highlighted in the capital needs assessment where our power infrastructure on the transit side needs significant investment. But we're not waiting for those dollars even as we talk about them. We are looking to be proactive. What we have right now is in the midst of procuring and using what we call thermal sensors. And thermal sensors allows us to inspect differently and check wiring for hot spots. When you have hot spots, we can proactively address them and repair them before they actually result in those failures. You yeah. did appoint yeah. Dennis Varley as chief of stations, and this was something that you did uh, certainly after we saw some of the incidents that you had mentioned, Ed. So what is he telling you about the state of repair or disrepair in some of these stations? Where are things at? Well, Dennis has hit the ground running, um, and he has actually been out and about in our facilities um, doing assessment of his own. He's bringing staff with him. Um, we are reinventing how we also do our inspections. We're reinventing how we tackle the work. Um, you know, so for instance, while we have these outages for all the track work, we're taking advantage of them to go in and do repairs, to do significant cleaning. Uh, what we had at the this past thing where we did the work on the red line. Um, you, if you go visit JFK UMass, you can see that station has all new flooring, um, has uh, been repainted, new lighting to make a much brighter, safer environment, um, and other repairs that were needed. The, the canopy that protected the, the platform, all the re-roofing so it's no, no longer leaking. What's, what's he say about the state of repair for some well, of He acknowledges there's a lot of work ahead. In really, the stations themselves. In the stations themselves, the right. And, and every one of these um, areas we are going to tackle. You know, so for instance, uh, not long ago, uh, identified some areas where the platform at Suffolk Down uh, needed work. He immediately had the team put together the plan. We went in and we fixed them. No longer are we looking to be closing our facilities. We're looking to be more proactive, keep them repaired. Now, obviously, we have to catch up. We have inspections to do, and we will set ourselves up to be able to do those repairs timely because what we need to do is to make sure we're open for business, keep our service running so people know they can rely on the T. Phil Ling is in the chair this morning. We're on the record. Stay with us.